What's up everybody? Welcome back to the channel and welcome back for another how-to video. And in today's video, I'm going to show you how to make a silicone mold for a Shore Trooper helmet. So if you guys have been following me on Instagram and other things, you've noticed that I've been making some resin helmets. Uh, this is actually two helmets that I actually just demolded. I've not actually cleaned them up yet. And I've had people ask me, you know, how, how to do it. And so I thought, why not? Let's make a, a little how-to video. Um, you don't really need a whole lot. You need a figure. And with me, I'm doing helmets. So... Boom, we got a helmet. Uh, you'll also need, what I use is the Osmo 30 right here. Uh, this is actually a really good um, silicone mold. It's one-to-one. -one. It's uh, got a part A, a part B, it's equal. So you don't have to have scales or anything like that. And it makes a really good mold. Uh, that's one of the molds I've been using for the actual uh, Short, uh, stormtrooper helmets. So um, you also need some cups. Um, I, I get these measuring cups from Amazon. They're like 48 of them for I think 10 bucks. They're dirt cheap and paper cups. And you need a hot glue gun and some clay. That's about it. So uh, I tell you what, I'll flip things around and we'll start prepping everything and I'll show you how I do it. All right, so let's get some stuff organized. Uh, first and foremost, you need the helmet or whatever it is you're actually going to uh, cast or make a silicone mold for. Uh, you can do any kind of head sculpt. The same procedure you can do with any figure. Uh, of course, some measuring cups, um, an actual pour cup. And I personally like this uh, plastilini uh, clay. Make sure if you use clay that it's sulfur free. And basically what that means is it never really dries out, which is a big thing. You don't want your clay to dry out. So I basically just get a little wad of it. So what we're doing now is just prepping the actual figure. Um, so I basically what I'm doing is I'm forming my uh, fill tube. And it'll all make sense here really quick. So what I basically am doing, you take basically on the helmet or the head scope, you take a spot to where it's as flat as possible or there's no real detail. Uh, like you wouldn't want to do it right here in the front. So basically right here on the top of the helmet, I take some clay and basically just form it on here, like so. Now you can make these tubes as big or as little as you want. Um, I personally prefer a little bit larger of a fill tube, like so. Uh, then I actually take it and just set it aside for a minute. I'm done with the clay. And again, this is entirely up to you, this part. Again, I I prefer a little bit wider of a, of a tube. The next thing I want to look at is I want to look in relationship to how big the, the height is because I don't, I don't need to fill up the whole cup. So I basically want the helmet about halfway so I know that I've actually got a little bit too much. But once I have it formed, I can come in with my razor knife and basically score it like that and then take it off then i'll put it right back up on the, the helmet like so boom and what i'm trying to do is just make sure it's as flush as possible around the helmet like so also uh the cup since i'm not using the actual whole cup uh, the thing I like about these cups is this blue line right here. I'll actually make a little bit of an insert right there. Take the old trusty scissors 
you can do it with a box knife, but like I said, I just I just trim it around with the scissors. Like so. It doesn't have to be a, a perfect cut. Uh, the main thing is you just want to be able to get this inside the cup, like so. Uh, the next thing is a heat gun, or a heat, not a heat gun, but an actual glue gun. Now, you can actually make this tube with hot glue. Um, me personally, I like the plasticine uh, clay. And you take the helmet and pop it down into the center of the cup. I'll show you here in just a second once the actual glue dries. Uh, an important note, and I will uh, I should have explained it in the beginning, is this line right here on the cup. You want to orientate this line to the front of the helmet. So if you can see, I have the front of the helmet and the front of the line. So that way you know when you get to the second part of this, It'll all make sense when you actually take the mold out. All right, so that's that's in there nice and tight like so. Now the fun part. We get to do our actual mixture. So another cool thing about these cups, and if you notice, like I said, the blue line, the cups here have ounces on them. So you can basically look at this and go, okay, that's five ounces to fill that all the way up. So I need two and a half ounces of part A and part B. So that sort of makes it a lot easier to, uh, to formulate. <laughs> um, this one actually right here is really, really messy because I actually had an accident and I forgot to clean my bottle. So please excuse me for my messiness. I've been doing a lot of molding lately. Uh, basically, you just want to shake it up, stir it up. Uh, I like these little wood skewers right here. Uh, you can get these at grocery stores. They work really good. The part A is the thicker of the two. Uh, so basically, I'll stir it up with the actual stir stick. And you can stir both of them up, but the, the part B is a little thinner, so you can shake it, but we'll, uh, we'll stir them both up, like so. All right, so we need basically two and a half ounces of this one. So let me get this over here. So... I think I've got enough left in this one because I've been using this one a lot. So we'll, well, there should be plenty. So once you start getting towards your line on the, and I do recommend these cups. They do take a lot of the guesswork out of it. Um, I don't know. This, this is going to be close. I might actually be at the bottom of the barrel on the, this one right here. So, we get two ounces out of it. I'll be surprised, but it fills up pretty quick. Oh yeah. And it doesn't have to go all the way uh, to five ounce, but we're going to see how much we can actually get out of it because I'm not going to use these after I get done with this pour here. They, they just won't be enough left in the container. So we might as well see how much we can get out of it. All right, so we're at two ounces now. A two ounce pour, uh, which would be four ounces total, might actually work pretty good for this. So we're right at two ounces. I'm literally going to try to get every little bit out. All right. All right, so that's actually two full ounces right there. So, part, part A is poured. Part B, we'll get another stir stick. Give this a, 
a good stir. All right. All right, I think we're good on that one. So let's start pouring this one. As you can see, this is a little bit more runnier than the, uh, the part A. And we're at two ounces right there. I must have actually got some of my mixtures off a little bit, but I'm pretty sure that a four ounce pour will do, but I want to be safe. I want to be safe and I want to make sure that I actually have enough. So I'm going to break out my other one. It's better to be safe than sorry. So there's that one. And there's part A right there. So let's crack this one open. Because the last thing you want is to have a pour and not have enough. So there's that one. All right, so let's go ahead We'll stir this one up and we'll go ahead and pour the other half ounce that I think I need. All right. Yeah, this stuff is really crazy thick. Crazy thick. All right. Let's get that over here. Let's just go ahead and pour another half ounce. Now the thing to remember is, as long as both are separated, there's no, you don't have to worry about it. It's when you mix it is when the actual um, reaction starts. And you got a pretty good work time on this. Um, basically in a nutshell, you got 30 minutes to work it and typically about six hours to pour it or to uh, demold it. So get this one opened up like so. You go through a lot of uh, stir sticks. <laughs> Get this one stirred up good. All right, another half ounce here. And voila, right there, boom. We now have part A and part B completely poured and ready. Put that one right there. Put that one over there. All right, so now here's where the fun happens right here. As you can see, there's not a lot, there's not a lot involved in it. It's not crazy rocket science. All right, we got our piece. We got our part, part A and part B. Part B in first. And that's another thing I like about these, these plastic cups. And, and again, you can do this with paper cups. All right. Try to get every little bit. You're not going to get it all, but you want to try to get as much as you possibly can. Now the mixture. And it's actually going to change color on you. This uh, particular product will turn a purple or like a lavender color. But again, you just want to make sure, scrape the sides, get all of this mixed up. Is, is, you just want to mix this up. And like I said, once you start this process, you got 30 minutes. So don't feel like you're under the gun. The thing I like about these clear cups is you can actually see on the sides. Right here, you can still see the pink. So I can come through and scrape the sides as good as I possibly can. Like I said, it's not gonna be perfect. All right. All 
get this thing mixed up. Get her mixed up. All right, while I'm mixing and I got some time to do it, we're gonna go ahead and put some release agent. Um, what I particularly use is the smooth on mold release. And you don't, you don't have to spray a lot, basically about 12 inches away. And I'm mainly more worried about right in here than I am the sides. And there we go on that. And we can continue mixing. That mold release dries pretty quick. Now, you can watch videos on this, and they, they talk about degassing and stuff like that because you don't want air bubbles. And there's a neat little trick that I've discovered on the old interwebs on how to minimize that. All right. So when you start the pour process, basically in a nutshell, you want to start in one corner. And I basically just, you can see the air bubbles right here. So very slowly, let it drop down in there. And then you want to bring it up high. And you'll see the air bubbles start popping as it's actually coming out over the mold. So you'll see these little air bubbles. And then you just bring it up a little higher. And you're just pouring on one corner like so. There we go. All right, we're getting close to the top of the, or the bottom of the helmet. Again, nice and slow. You don't want to dump, dump it in. You just want to bring it up and just let it flow out over the piece you're wanting to mold. Nice, slow process. All right, there we go. It's going down inside the helmet. Now, there's a couple ways we could have done this. We could have actually put some clay in the hole, but I'm trying different things. I want to see what it does. So, and we're just going to keep on pouring because I like a pretty solid base at the bottom, and that'll all make sense when we come back to this. So, just keep on pouring. Nice, steady stream. This is the exciting part right here. All right. We're getting close. Getting close. All right. And then voila. All right. So now... We're getting things ready. We got it poured. Just start tapping the side of it and you should start seeing some air bubbles coming up. And I do a little twist and you'll see those air bubbles coming up. There we go. And just do some twist and twist and twist. And I just basically work my way up and down the mold like so. And you're not beating on it hard. You're just twisting it. And that way, any air bubbles will come up. And you can see the air bubbles, the little dots that are popping up. And what I'm really happy with is I'm not seeing any big air bubbles. So, all right. Well, there we go, guys. Um... Tell you what, let me clean up a little bit. I'll flip the camera around because we've got a little bit of time to wait before we can demold. So I will be right back. All right, we're back. So uh, we've got the piece. We've got the silicone mix. We got it poured. We got the uh, clay in place. And now's the waiting game. So we're going to stop right now. When I come back, it's either going to be six hours or maybe even longer. I might actually pick this up uh, the next day because I usually like the, my molds just to cure. I don't get in a rush. I just like them to cure right. So, uh, guys, when we come back, we'll take the mold out. We'll take the piece out. We'll see how it turns out. So, uh, I don't know. Wish me luck. I'll see you in a minute. 
All right, everybody. So it is actually the next day from when we actually poured this mold. Um, I decided to go ahead and just wait for uh, a whole day because I actually wanted the mold to actually come out and uh, that's, that's just the way I do it. But as you can see, it's, it's, it's hard now. Um, it's actually cured up really good. So the next step is we've actually got to take off the, the paper cup. And if you remember, I told you this, this line right here, it's important to put your, your figure, your head scope, your helmet, and let that line be the front. And yeah, it'll make sense here in a minute. So tell you what, I'm going to flip the camera around. We'll take this apart and uh, I'll show you what it looks like. All right, so we have our figure without a head. All right, so what we're going to do is we're just basically just going to take this, this cup and you're just going to tear it off, just like this right here. As you can see, it doesn't stick to the cup. It actually demolds really good. And if you remember, this is the actual clay that we did for the actual, uh, to put the helmet on. And here's that line I was talking about right here. So the next step, we have to actually make some registration lines in it, um, key, key lines and things like that. So um, since I'm going to be actually using a knife, uh, let me rotate the camera around and then we'll start cutting it open and we'll see if we can get the uh, helmet out. All right, so basically what I wanted to do is actually, I just wanted to make room since I'm going to be using this knife. So we know this is the front and we know this is the actual clay right here. And as you can see, the clay actually, it's not stuck to the mold at all. And you can actually pull the clay out, but I'm not worried about that right now. So we know this is the front. So we were going to come 90 degrees to right here. And I typically, let me make sure that I'm right. So I'm gonna start making a cut right here, like so. I'm gonna shorten that blade up a little bit. You can use a regular uh, hobby knife, and I do use one of those as well, but I wanna use this for the first, the first cut. So basically, you come in at an angle like that. So as you can see, we've made the key right there. Now you come over to the other side, that key went that way. So we wanna make our incision, bring it down, and I'm gonna go the opposite way for this key. Let me spread that out just a little bit. like so boom all right so now is where i'll actually break out a more uh straighter blade and right here it is so that's when i break out one of these so what we're going to do is we're going to look down inside and i'm going to see if there's any like right here's a good example see how it's like holding up right there so basically you're just going to come in and I usually turn the blade up for a little bit and just work it very, very slowly and basically separate it more. There's another little piece right there, right there. Boom. All right. So I'm going to go ahead and take the actual clay off now. Now we can see our helmet right there. I see another little piece right there. And let me pull this back over towards the middle here. There we go. All right, a moment of truth. Let's see if we can get the helmet out. Now again, I did not put anything in the peg hole. So this one might be a little difficult. Boom. <laughs> It actually popped right out. I'll have to, uh, I don't know where the helmet went. <laughs> it went across the floor. But here's the front. There's the peg hole right there, as you can see. 
right there. And there's the front of the actual helmet. So now we're gonna pour some resin. So uh, we might as well pour it, right? So I'll tell you what, let me get my resin and we'll get that process started and I'll be right back. All right, so what we're gonna do is, so the, the resin that I use is uh, Smoothcast, um, I think it's a Smoothcast 30, I do believe. Yep, Smoothcast 30. So it actually dries white. It's actually pretty rigid. Uh, when pieces come out, this is what they come out with. So these two molds right here are actually ones that I did on these uh, Stormtrooper helmets. And this is the mold we just did. Now, another thing we're gonna need is, we'll need a, a stir stick and we will need, hang on, we need a rubber band. Uh, one rubber band should do. And we also need the resin. And this particular resin is the same as the silicone. It's uh, a part A, part B. It's a one-to-one -one mixture, so you can't mess it up as far as that goes. But we need to do another piece of prep. I've already prepped these two, and the next thing is baby powder. So basically in a nutshell, you open up your mold. Let me uh, flip this around a little bit better so you can see. Just spread it apart like so. And we're gonna put some baby powder in there. Get it off the edges, drop it down into the cavity, shake it around a little bit. Then you take a can of compressed air, like so. Lightly, just lightly spray it. All right, take the rubber band. And I basically uh, double it and basically have it like this and then like that. But I also want to make sure that the mold isn't like this, that it's nice and flush on both sides. All right, now, same principles apply with this part A as with the other part A and part B and part B. I'm going to shake it up. So basically, you, this is more liquidy, so you can, you can just hand shake them. Works great. So I usually give it just a few seconds of doing that. Uh, ounces wise, uh, these helmets don't take a lot. So I think I am going to, I am going to do two ounces is too much. So I'm gonna try, I'm gonna go for like a half an ounce. That might give me a full ounce. It's probably gonna be too much, but for this video, uh, I'm okay with that. So. Oh, this is this one actually is a brand new one. Hang on a minute. Make sure. Yep, this is my brand new one. I've got. Uh, I actually picked up the wrong box. Excuse me. I have two boxes here. <laughs> That's the one we should be using because it is almost done. So. Once again, shake them up. All right, here we go, part A. Again, half an ounce. All right. Right there. And again, this is the same way it is with the silicone. As long as the both parts are separated, the reaction doesn't take place. So, and voila. Maybe a smidgen more of part A. Just a little bit. There we go. All right. Put these back up, because we're done. Now, before we pour it, I wanted to touch, but you see how big my pour hole is? That's the reason I like a bigger pour hole. Pour hole. 
it just makes it easier to, I don't know, for me. Uh, there is a little bit more cleanup the bigger the tube, but I think the bigger the tube also lets more air escape. All right, same principle. We just mix it up. You don't got to, uh, you know, it's not like a stir it for 10 minute type thing. You just make sure it's incorporated really good. All right, that over there. We're gonna get our molds relatively close. I'm gonna start with this one first because I'm not sure how much this one actually will take. Uh, now one of the things that I do is I pour a little bit in it, like so, and swirl it around. And you definitely want to pour this slow, but you don't go you don't have to go high with it. Just a nice little stream. Cause that's going to minimize uh, air pockets and voila, same principle here. We pour a little bit in give it a swirl. Then we finish it off. Nice slow pour. Boom, move that one over to the side. And same, just same thing. You're just repeating. Pour a little bit in, give it a swirl. And finish it off. Voila, and as you, I mean, I've got, I actually got enough in here uh, left that I probably could have poured probably another two of these, but for now we wait. We wait for the reaction to happen, and what we'll what we'll notice is it'll start turning white, um, and it actually warms up. Like this this cup right here is actually warm to the touch. So, and it'll start getting thicker, and. It's, it's a really cool process to watch it get done. Sometimes it happens uh, relatively quick, but again, you got a pretty good working time with this stuff, so it doesn't, it, you don't have to rush. You have to have a little bit of haste, but you don't have to like really, really rush. So, but as you can see, it's already getting a little bit of a white right there. I'm already seeing, oh, this one's really popping. You can already see the white in the bottom of the cup. As you can see, it's starting to solidify. We're getting the reaction back here. So that's a good thing. We're actually getting the reaction. So now we're gonna wait again. <laughs> uh, typically with this particular process, I mean, it's a, I'm not sure exactly what it is. Uh, I'm trying to see here. I usually let it sit for about four hours, you know, but again, I treat these like I do uh, my silicone molds is I just, I don't get in a hurry on them. So I tell you what guys, when we come back, we'll demold these things. What's up everybody. Welcome back to the last installment for this uh, mold build. So as a recap, we, took a Scarab Trooper helmet right here, and we made a silicone mold, and we poured the resin. So, hey, hopefully it comes out right. So, but first, I've got a couple uh, Trooper helmets. So, first things first, we take the uh, rubber bands off and basically just crack it open. All right. Here we go. Let's get it pulled out. Boom, right there. Looky there. Right there, a cast Stormtrooper helmet. Right there, boom, heck yeah. 
All right. And the beauty of this is the fact you can you can reuse these molds like over and over. Uh, one thing I do want to show you is this little bit of an overflow right here. You can actually just take and peel it up if you want to. Take this rubber band off and crack her open. Now, boom. Got a little bit of flashing on it. Nothing major. It just it really just wipes right off. But there is another trooper helmet right there. Now, again, like I said earlier, my field tubes are bigger. So you don't have to go this big. And with me just now starting out and getting used to it, I'll probably shrink these field tubes and make them a little smaller. All right. So this is the one. This is the new one right here. Scarab Trooper. I don't know how this thing's going to turn out. So, <laughs> because this one still has the ball joint uh, in the mold. So, fingers crossed. All right. Crack open the mold. I know this one will probably be a little tighter because of the uh, the peg. I just I just heard it pop. I don't know if you did or not. Oh, wow. Guys, that, that is on point right there. Look at this. And, hang on, there's the peg hole right there. Now, I, I don't know. You would probably have to dremel this hole out to actually uh, get it to work on a peg. Uh, I don't know, but for now, I'm going to flip the camera around, and I'm actually going to clean this up and show you how I do that. So uh, let's get the Dremel out and clean her up. All right, for this uh, Scarif Trooper, um, I probably should have made the tube a little bit littler on this one, but hey, we're going to give her a shot. So uh, Dremel tool, cutoff wheel. This is the cutoff wheel that I recommend. Um, it's it's not like the paper ones, and the paper ones actually will uh, have a ten tendency to break. Safety glasses, please. Anytime you're working with uh, a Dremel. So let's see how we can do with this thing. First thing I'm going to do is I'm basically just going to take out the biggest bulk. And I keep the drum at the slower speeds. So now we've actually got the biggest bulk of it. And you can actually sand with this. So that's what we're going to do. I'm going to start doing a little bit of sanding. And just try to work it down a little bit. All right, so as you can see, it's uh, it's coming down. And just like I said, my field tube on this one was actually big, and which basically means I'm doing a lot more work than I need to. So, But with the Dremel tool, it actually goes relatively quick. So what I'm doing here is I'm getting on the edge and I'm flushing it up with the actual helmet. That's all we're doing right here. Little flush work. All right. I think that might actually be uh, good enough. I'm actually just comparing it. All right, next thing that I personally do is uh, 120. We're basically just going to start taking this down a little bit. Now, with this particular helmet, it actually does have two details right here that I'm going to lose in this mold because my field tube was too big. But hey, that's okay. I can actually put that line back in if I need to. 
That was a piece of flashing right there. So basically what I'm doing here is just base, just simple, easy strokes, because this resin actually sands really good. You don't even have to put a lot of pressure to it. That's what I love about having uh, sanding uh, sandpaper on paint sticks. Basically, you're just working away around the edge. All right. And next, we're going to grab some fine sandpaper. And I use uh, 320 for this process. Because the 320 will take off enough, but it won't take it off really, really aggressively. Oh, wow. Yeah, that's coming off good. That's looking good. All right, guys, i tell you what. I am going to finish cleaning this thing up, and I'm also going to check this peg hole out and see how it goes, and we'll be back and... We'll uh, give the final thoughts on this process. All right, everybody. So i tell you what. Um, I'm actually pretty pleased with this. Um, I've actually learned a few things in this process. Uh, number one, doing them to actually making resin helmets um, for action figures with the ball and joint is definitely harder than just casting a simple helmet. Um, but overall, I think it came out pretty good <laughs> right there. Uh, I actually did uh, have a little bit of a boo-boo right here. I know you probably won't be able to tell it, uh, but there's uh, some chips right here. And that's okay because that's battle damage. That's, that's what I'm looking at. But I don't know. You guys tell me. I mean, I think, I think this is pretty legit. Uh, I think it's cool. It's fun. If you're into customizing your figures and you want to give them your own spin, uh, either through paint or things like that, um, yeah, having the ability to make your own uh, resin helmet, it's fun. It is fun. It's uh, it's challenging. I said it in previous segments of this. You're going to make mistakes. Just be prepared. You're not going to do it overnight. Um, like I said, I just busted that little part of his visor right there just because I was trying to put the, the head sculpt on or the helmet. I did have to actually um, wallow out the hole uh, for this particular uh, peg. No big deal. It's still a good tight fit. We still get uh, rotation. So I'm happy with it. But Guys, that's it. We're going to wrap it up for this how-to video. Uh, apologies, it's a long video, but I wanted to try to give you as much information as I could and show you as much as I could based on how I've been doing this. Um, but definitely let me know in the comments. Let me know what you think. Let me know if you enjoyed this. Um, also, let me know if you're going to attempt it. Uh, again, it's, it's, it's a commitment. You know, you're going to put time into it and you're going to have an investment. It's not a huge investment, but you will have an investment in it. Um, but yeah, I'll put links to the, all the smooth on products that I use. I bought them from Amazon. I'll put links and stuff in the video. So you'll know uh, what I used and that might save you a little bit of time on finding material, but guys, that's it. Uh, we're done. Uh, again, apologies for it being a long video, but hey, I've enjoyed making it. So, whew, I think it turned out good. Let me know in the comments what you think. Um, I think it turned out really good. The detail and everything is amazing on it. So, but guys, if this is your first time to my channel, please make sure and hit that subscribe button. Make sure you got notifications turned on. That way you'll know when I drop videos. And always remember, toys even when you make parts for yourself, refresh your soul, and I'll see you later.